Hello and welcome to the next video. In this one, I will show you how to generate a Kotlin HTTP client from any open API specs, both version 2 and 3, and save us hours of work. During this tutorial, we will learn what exactly open API specs are and what problem do they solve, why and when code generation might be a good idea, and how to generate Kotlin clients using different libraries like Ktor, Retrofit or Spring Web Client. With all of that said, let's get to work. Let's start everything by describing what exactly are Open API specs. Open API, formerly known as Swagger, is a specification for describing and documenting RESTful APIs. Imagine a world where every person or a team describes their created API in their own custom manner. Confluence pages, readmes, text files or graphic charts and many many more, probably a million ways to describe the same thing. Thankfully, OpenAPI solves this issue and allows us to describe APIs in a standardized manner so that both the creators and consumers are on the same page. What does it look like? Well, let's take a look at the example we will be working with today. As we can see, the OpenAPI spec is a YAML file, of course it can be a JSON too, which is nothing else than a language agnostic instruction of the API. Moreover, given its standardized structure and format, it can be easily read not only by humans, but machines too, which we will see later in this video. When we take a look at the first line, we see the version of the specs. Following, we have the info about the API. Right here we can see that today we will be working with JSON placeholder API. As a description, we see the link to the web page. In the following lines, we define the paths. As we can see, we will be using two paths, the first one to get all posts and the second one to get post by ID. Lastly, we define the components, which are nothing else than the response bodies or request bodies used in our API, which later will be converted to actual classes and objects in our code base. Excellent, so when and why code generation might be a good idea? Well, as software engineers, we automate things so they can be done easier, faster, and with less amount of errors. At this point, you probably see where I'm going now. Whenever we do things manually, we need more time, we make more mistakes, and we distract ourselves from the things that we, the humans, are actually good at. And among plenty of places in our code base, HTTP clients might be a good place to start with. This is technically the area where the only thing that we care about is to send and fetch the data in an appropriate format. There is no rocket science, there is no big design, we only care about the appropriate format of this data. And usually, these are the places where we end up with a lot of boilerplate code. So what might be the solution here? And you already know the answer, open API generator. And although in this article we will focus on the client, this generator can be used to create servers and documentation for over 50 languages and frameworks too. If you would like to check the full list, then you can find the link for this in the description for this video. Okay, but how exactly is it going to help us? Well, in simple words, this tool can be used to convert the open API specs we saw previously into ready-to-use Kotlin classes, with the implementation of Ktor, Retrofit, or any other library, and ready-to-use data classes, which will be used as response and request objects. With all of that being said, let's finally start the practice part. Let's navigate to the build Gradle KTS file, and probably the easiest way to add the OpenAPI generator to our project will be the use of plugin. So what we have to do, we'll specify the ID, and as the name, I'll point to org open API generator. Org open API generator. And we'll use the version 701. Version 701. Nextly, let's synchronize the project. We can do it right here. Or similarly, we can open up the Gradle tab and do it in this place. When it's done, we'll see the following four tasks added to our project. Open API Generate, Generators, Meta, and Validate. The first one, Open API Generate, is used to generate the code with Open API, and this is the one we will be using. The second one can be used to list generators available 
via open API generators. The third one can be used to generate a new generator to be consumed via open API generator. And the last one we can use to validate our specs. Following, we must add the specs to our project. What I did here, I have the open API folder in the root and we can find our specs right here. Following, let's navigate to the build gradle KTS and we need to alter the open API generate task. So let's open up this one and what I will have to do, I'll specify open API generate, open API generate and let's edit this task. Firstly, we need to instruct open API generator where the specs are. So input spec dot set and right here we'll set the root dir slash open api and the open api yaml to make our lives easier in intellij we can click copy copy path reference and we can go with path from content root but the first thing we'll have to specify will be dollar root dir slash open api and our placeholder API specification. Following, I would like to specify which generator we would like to use. As we could see previously, there are plenty of languages, libraries, etc. And this is the place where we specify the language, Kotlin in our case. Generator name, set, and Kotlin. It's worth to mention that the above configs are the only two required settings. We need to specify the input spec and the generator we would like to use. Moreover, I would like to mention that at the moment there is an existing bug, so we can specify only one input spec. By the time you will be watching this video, I assume it will be fixed. But if you have any problems with that, then I highly encourage you to check out the merger plugin. And lastly, if you are wondering what library will the Kotlin generator use by default, then at the moment of recording, it is OK HTTP 4.2.0 version. Excellent, but in the beginning I mentioned that we can use plenty of libraries, so let's see how can we change them. Let's hit enter, library, set, and for example specify JVM retrofit2. No worries, in a moment I will show you where you can find the possible options here. JVM Retrofit 2. In the meantime, let's refresh the project. And if you would like to learn about all the possible configurations that you can specify, then I am attaching in the description for this video the link to the Kotlin generator documentation. Let's search for the library not date library. Here we go. We have specified the JVM retrofit tool, but we can also use the default one, Ktor, OK, HTTP free, Spring Web Client, Multi-Platform, Vertex, Volley, whatever you want. It's worth mentioning that JVM retrofit tool allows us to uh, introduce suspended functions pretty easily. Excellent, so let's get back to the project. And I would like to get rid of this JVM retrofit library for now. We'll use the default OK HTTP implementation. So let me refresh. And let's generate our classes. So open up Gradle, navigate down, open API generate, and let's wait for it to finish. When it's done, let's navigate to the build, generate resources. SRC, and right here we will see the POST API, which will be implemented using the OK HTTP. Excellent. So, can we start it using already? Not exactly. We have to add one change in the Gradle config so that we'll point to this uh, generated resources uh, directory because otherwise these files cannot be imported to our project. So, let's open up build Gradle KTS, source set main, java, and let's specify src dir, and what we would like to use here will be build dir slash generate resources slash main slash src. Now 
Again, let's load Gradle changes. When it's done, let's go to the main class and let's define our API. So val API equals posts API and I would like to specify the base path base path HTTPS JSON placeholder type code dot com. Excellent. Lastly, let's get posts and let's print them out. So API get posts for each and I would like to print them out. Control Alt plus L and now let's run this function. Okay, but what happened here? Well, it's worth mentioning that this is our responsibility to import the necessary libraries and the generator does not do that out of the box. So we have to get back to build grade KTS and specify the necessary dependencies. When we take a look at the implementation, for example, models, we'll see that this uses Moshi from Square Up to serialize and deserialize JSON files. And when it comes to the API itself, we will need to add the OK HTTP free. So let's get back to build Gradle and let's add the necessary implementations. So the first one, implementation, and this will become square up, OK HTTP free, OK HTTP, and the version will be 4.11.0. Control plus D, let's delete everything after square up. And this time I would like to specify Moshi, Moshi, and the version will be 1.15.0. Zero, control plus D, and this time I would like to add Moshi Kotlin. So with all of these changes, let's in Gradle project. Excellent. Let's get back to our APIs post. We can see that this compiles now. Similarly, we can see for the data class. Lastly, let's get back to the main, hit run, and see whether this will be working. Excellent, we can see that we've successfully fetched 100 posts and printed them out, which indicates that everything is working as expected. So from now on, you already know how to do that, how to specify the library you would like to use and how to operate with Gradle plugin. But before we finish, I would like to show you one more tip, how to make generation a part of a compilation because Whenever we try to run the code without the generated files, it will fail. So there is no point of doing that manually each time either. As a solution with Gradle, we can easily alter the compile Kotlin flow. So let's get back to the build Gradle KTS. Let's introduce tasks, compile Kotlin. And I would like this task to depend on OpenAPI generate. So whenever we would like to compile, we need to run the OpenAPI generate first. So depends on, and let's specify the name of the task, OpenAPI generate. Let's load changes. To verify, let's clean first. The build will be deleted completely. And following, let's try to find the compile Kotlin task. Compile Kotlin and let's try to run it. As we can see, the task with generator was run first and everything compiled successfully. And basically, that's all for this video on how to generate a Kotlin HTTP client using the OpenAPI generator. If you have any questions or would like to see a follow-up video on that topic, then let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel.